Welcome to our lesson on Understanding Notes and Intervals on the Fretboard. Today, we're demystifying the guitar fretboard, a key aspect of your journey as a blues guitarist. We'll tackle note names, sharps and flats, and the layout of the 12-note musical octave. We'll focus on the C major scale and its intervals, explore open strings and note identification, and highlight the importance of the sixth and fifth strings. Lastly, we'll dive into the concept of musical intervals and their shapes on the fretboard, which will open up a new level of understanding and creativity in your music. So, grab your guitar. Let's get started. All right, let's start at the very foundation with the names of the notes. In Western music, we have seven key musical notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Each of these notes represents a distinct pitch. <laughs> Sounds familiar, doesn't it? These notes correspond to the syllables we use in solfege, a method often used for teaching pitch and sight singing. It is the do-re-mi system. Some of you might already be familiar with this system from singing in a choir or from the famous Sound of Music song. It's a useful tool that allows us to understand and communicate pitches and melodies in a more intuitive way. Here's how they correspond. For the guitar, we generally use the alphabetical system rather than the classical do-re-mi system. But it's useful to know both, as it can facilitate communication with other musicians who might be more comfortable with one system or the other. Understanding these musical notes and their solfege counterparts gives us a strong starting point to navigate the fretboard with more familiarity and precision. For this course, though, we'll stick with the alphabetical system. Let's now shift our focus onto sharp and flat notes, which fall under a concept in music known as accidentals. Sharp and flat are two types of accidentals, with a sharp sign indicating an increase in pitch by a half step, and a flat sign signifying a decrease by the same measure. On the guitar, a half step is equivalent to moving by one fret. For instance, if we take the note C and raise it by a half step, we achieve C sharp. Conversely, lowering the note D by a half step yields D flat. Now, you might be wondering, aren't C-sharp and D-flat the same sound? And you'd be absolutely correct. C-sharp and D-flat are termed enharmonic equivalents, which simply means they are different names for the same pitch. Here's an important detail to keep in mind. Moving from E to F or from B to C doesn't involve a sharp or flat note in between, as they're already a half step apart. These sharp and flat notes are, of course, also represented on your fretboard. Each fret on your guitar corresponds to a half step. So if you strum an open E string and then press down the first fret, you're playing E sharp or F, since there's no note between E and F. Keep in mind, a solid grasp of these sharp and flat notes is vital to accurately identifying all the various notes on your fretboard, significantly enhancing your ability to navigate and interpret musical pieces. Now, let's dive deeper into the fundamental structure of music. In Western music, we have a total of 12 distinct notes. This might seem surprising considering we've only discussed seven notes so far, right? Let me explain. We start with our seven basic notes, which are C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Then we have five additional notes that come from the sharps and flats we discussed earlier. These are C sharp or D flat, D sharp or E flat, F sharp or G flat, G sharp or A flat, and A sharp or B flat. If you count these, you'll find we have 12 unique notes in total. This collection of 12 notes is often referred to as the chromatic scale, where chromatic comes from the Greek word chroma, meaning color. It's like having a palette of 12 colors to paint your musical picture. Understanding this 12-note structure is crucial in music theory, and it forms the basis for everything else we'll be discussing, including scales, chords, and intervals. It's the fundamental alphabet of your musical language. Now. With our 12 musical notes in mind, let's understand how they are systematically arranged to form scales. We'll be focusing on the C major scale, one of the most frequently used scales in Western music. The C major scale consists of C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, corresponding to the Do, Re, Mi sequence we've discussed earlier. A scale is a succession of notes that increase or decrease in pitch. In the C major scale, we begin with the note C and ascend to the next C adhering to a specific pattern of intervals. These intervals contribute to the unique sonic character of the scale. In the major scale, we follow this interval pattern whole, whole, 
half, whole, 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 half. In musical terms, a whole signifies a whole step or two half steps, and a half represents a half step. On your guitar, moving one fret up or down is a half step, while moving two frets up or down equates to a whole step. Starting on C and following this interval pattern, we get start on C, whole step to D, whole step to E, half step to F, whole step to G, whole step to A, whole step to B, half step back to C. You'll notice that half steps naturally fall between E and F and B and C. This is a characteristic feature of the major scale, and it's a key point to remember. It will be of great help in understanding and constructing other scales. Grasping the intervals within the C major scale forms the basis of much of music theory and will lay a solid foundation for the rest of our lessons. Please note, at this stage, you only need to conceptualize this, and we're not yet moving on to learning scale shapes. Now let's take a step back from the scales and intervals and focus on our guitar. Your guitar has six strings, and each one corresponds to a particular note when played open, meaning you're not pressing down on any frets. Starting from the thickest string, the one closest to you when you're holding the guitar, and moving to the thinnest, these are the notes of the open strings. Sixth string, E, lowest pitch. Fifth string, A, fourth string, D, third string, G, second string, B, first string, E, highest pitch. An easy way to remember this is by using a mnemonic such as Eddie Eight Dynamite, Goodbye Eddie. Knowing these open string notes is fundamental because they serve as a reference point for finding all the other notes on the fretboard. For example, if you know that the open fifth string is an A, then you know that the first fret of the fifth string is A sharp, the second fret is B, and so on. Remember to take the time to memorize these open string notes. They will be your guiding stars as you navigate the fretboard. Now that we're familiar with the notes of the open strings, we can start identifying the note on each fret. Each fret on your guitar represents a half step. This means that as you move up the fretboard, towards the body of the guitar, you are increasing the pitch by one half step with each fret. Let's take the sixth string, the low E, as an example. Open string, no fret pressed. E. First fret, F, E to F, is a half step. Second fret, F sharp or G flat. Third fret, G. Fourth fret, G sharp or A flat. Fifth fret, A, and so on. Remember that E to F and B to C are naturally half steps with no sharp or flat notes in between. This pattern holds true for every string. If you know the note of the open string, you can figure out the note on any fret by simply counting up. Practicing this method of identifying notes will help you become more familiar with the fretboard and make finding your way around much easier. This skill is fundamental to understanding and applying music theory to your guitar playing. Next, let's discuss the particular importance of the sixth and fifth strings and why it's valuable to memorize the notes on these strings. The sixth string, E, and the fifth string, a, are often used as reference points for chord shapes, scale shapes, and riffs. They are the basis of many fundamental guitar techniques and elements, such as power chords and bar chords. Additionally, these strings are commonly used for root notes. The root note is the first note of a scale, and it gives the scale its name. For example, if you play a C major scale, the root note is C. Knowing the notes on these strings will allow you to quickly identify where to place your fingers when you want to play chords or scales in a particular key. For example, if you know that the third fret on the sixth string is a G, you can start a G major scale or a G major chord from that point. An easy way to start memorizing these notes is to first learn the notes on the frets with dots, usually the third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and twelfth frets. These dots are there to help you navigate the fretboard and can serve as landmarks. Once you know these notes, you can easily figure out the notes on the frets in between. For example, on the sixth string, open string, E, third, fret, G, fifth, fret, A, seventh, fret, B, ninth fret, C sharp, twelfth fret, E, the octave of the open string. By knowing these, you can quickly derive that the fourth fret is G sharp, the sixth fret is A sharp, the eighth fret is C, the tenth fret is D, and so on. Remember, this is not about rushing to memorize everything, but gradually familiarizing yourself with these notes over time. As you become more comfortable with the fretboard, 
This knowledge will become second nature, and it will immensely enhance your playing and understanding of the guitar. Knowing the notes on the sixth and fifth strings forms a robust start, but we obviously want to expand our knowledge to all the strings. An effective strategy for this is by employing octave shapes. In musical terms, an octave refers to the interval between one musical pitch and another with double its frequency. Essentially, it's the same note, albeit higher or lower in pitch. On the guitar, we can locate octaves by identifying specific patterns or shapes on the fretboard. Let's begin with locating the octave on the fourth string using the sixth string as our reference point. Start on any note on the sixth string. As an example, let's use the third fret, which is a G. Bypass the fifth string and move two frets up on the fourth string. You end up on the fifth fret of the fourth string. This note is also G, an octave higher than the one on the sixth string. This shape, sidestepping a string and shifting two frets up, outlines the octave. You might already be familiar with this shape if you've learned songs without fully delving into the music theory behind them. We can apply the same principle to locate the octave on the third string using the fifth string as a reference. Start on any note on the fifth string. For instance, let's use the third fret, which is a C. Sidestep the fourth string and move two frets up on the third string. You arrive at the fifth fret of the third string. This note is also C, an octave higher than the one on the fifth string. This shape doesn't remain consistent when finding the octave on the second string from the fourth string or the first string from the third string. Here, due to the unique tuning of the guitar, we need to move three frets up instead of two, as depicted in the diagram. This shape is also frequently employed in various songs, so you might already be acquainted with it. Mastering these octave shapes not only aids you in swiftly identifying the notes on all strings, but also enhances your comprehension of the guitar's layout. This knowledge serves as a valuable asset that you'll constantly utilize as you dive deeper into the realms of guitar playing and music theory. Until now, we've identified individual notes on the fretboard, but creating music involves understanding the relationships between these notes. This is where the concept of intervals becomes integral. In music, an interval denotes the distance between two pitches. Intervals constitute the foundation of scales, chords, and melodies. They are fundamental to the organization of a musical piece and its auditory perception. Let's delve into the basic intervals we need to be familiar with. Unison, the same note, for instance, E to E. Minor second, one half step, equivalent to one fret distance on the guitar. For instance, E to F. Major second, two half steps. For instance, E to F sharp. Minor third, three half steps. For instance, E to G. Major third, four half steps. For instance, E to G sharp. Perfect fourth, five half steps. For instance, E to A. Tritone, six half steps. For instance, E to A sharp or B flat. This interval is exactly half an octave and is commonly referred to as an augmented fourth, diminished fifth, or simply sharp fourth or flat fifth. Perfect fifth, seven half steps, for instance, E to B. Minor sixth, eight half steps, for instance, E to C. Major sixth, nine half steps, for instance, E to C sharp. Minor seventh, ten half steps, for instance, E to D. Major seventh, eleven half steps, for instance, E to D sharp. Octave, twelve half steps. For instance, E to E, one octave higher. You can locate these intervals on your guitar by counting the number of frets between the two notes. For instance, a perfect fifth interval from any note can be determined by advancing seven frets from that note. Understanding intervals will equip you with a profound insight into how chords and scales are constructed and how melodies interact with the underlying chords. It's a crucial concept for you to grasp as a guitarist, irrespective of your preferred musical style. Recognizing intervals across strings can significantly enhance your ability to navigate the fretboard and understand scales and chords more intuitively. A practical method for identifying intervals, particularly the perfect fifth, involves using a familiar pattern likely already in your repertoire, the power chord. Power chords are common in rock, punk, metal, and blues genres. They're simple, movable shapes consisting of the root note and its perfect fifth. Their simplicity and the robust sound they generate have earned them the moniker power chords. Here's how to form a power chord and identify the perfect fifth interval on the guitar. Start with a root note on the sixth string. As an example, we'll use the third fret, which is a G. 
The perfect fifth interval is on the fifth string, two frets higher than the root note. In our example, this is the fifth fret of the fifth string, which is a D. Playing these two notes together gives you a power chord. In our case, it's a G5 power chord. G is the root note and D is the fifth. This two fret jump from the sixth to the fifth string or from the fifth to the fourth and so on always yields a perfect fifth interval. This shape is movable, which means you can slide it up and down the fretboard to create power chords in any key. By understanding this power chord shape, you can determine that the interval between the sixth and fifth strings is the perfect fourth. This pattern applies to all pairs of strings, with the exception of the third and second strings. For this string pair, the power chord can be formed as follows. Place your index finger on the third string and your ring finger on the second string, three frets apart. By analyzing this pattern, you can deduce that the interval between the third and second strings is the major third. So, in summary, the interval for each pair of strings is as follows. Six, five-string pair, perfect fourth. Five, four-string pair, perfect fourth. Four, three-string pair, perfect fourth. Three, two-string pair, major third. Two, one-string pair, perfect fourth. Understanding these intervals and power chord shapes is crucial because a vast majority of chords are built around the perfect fifth. Now, you can identify the intervals of adjacent strings by using these power chord shapes. We've reached the end of our lesson on understanding notes and intervals on the guitar fretboard. In this lesson, we've explored some essential music theory fundamentals every guitarist should be familiar with. We've identified note names on the fretboard, grasped the importance of sharps and flats, and delved into the concept of intervals. We've also utilized practical tools like octave shapes and power chord patterns to visualize these concepts on the guitar. Remember, mastering the fretboard and understanding the relationships between notes is a continuous journey. Keep practicing and reinforcing these concepts, and gradually, they will become second nature. As your understanding deepens, you'll navigate the fretboard more easily, learn new songs faster, and even start improvising your melodies. In our next lesson, we'll dive further into the music theory behind blues. Until then, continue to practice and explore the fascinating world of guitar. Happy playing!